Hey, what's up? Derek Kirk of Effectatron here. And I've got another fun Halloween uh, tutorial for you today. We're going to learn how to create this cute little cauldron. Last year I did that spooky ghost. Uh, this year I did a cauldron. Uh, so basically, uh, there's a lot of uh, horror movies and spooky and creepy stuff out there during Halloween. But I don't really like horror movies. And what I do like are making things that I think my two and a half daughter will laugh at or smile at. And this is, I think, is going to get her. So uh, we'll see. But uh, I really like it. It's a cute little cauldron. And it's a lot of fun modeling techniques we're going to cover today. As well as covering the new 2024 Dynamic Rigid Body System. Which I honestly say they undersold in the like reveal of the new that like that should have been the highlight like subdivision in the viewport and speed in the viewport great all that was cool but the new rigid body systems is fantastic like putting that in the gpu simulation system it finally allows you to do like thousands of particles that actually have dynamics they really undersold it it's actually huge it's if you're going to do dynamics and stuff it's worth updating the 2024 just for that it's so so much better um but basically um 2024 pretty good i don't feel like it's as stable as 2023 yet but maybe i just need to use it a little bit longer but i've had it crash quite a few times but uh, i might be pushing the limits a little too hard in these rigid body dynamics but we'll see so let's go ahead and get into the modeling and everything of this bad boy right here and all the files for this will be ready uh to download in the link below so be sure to check that out on my gum road as well as a bunch of other stuff Thank you all so much for all the support you've given me over the years and helping the channel grow. We're almost like 20,000 subscribers now, which is crazy. Um, all the support and everything really helps out a bunch. The Mind in Motion workshop is on week five already, and uh, it's going in incredible. Like, they are loving it. People are, the students are making insane stuff. Uh, I haven't, I'm not going to show you yet. I want to make sure it's cool with everybody and everybody has like a finished thing to show uh, before we reveal kind of what they're working on. But uh, man, it's amazing. People are blowing me away. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll go ahead and create a new scene, which I've set up to be the default scene here with all this jazz. We don't need any of that. Uh, so this backdrop uh, object, all this is, is inside the asset browser. If you search studio, we have this backdrop node. There is one built in here, but I actually like this node better, uh, mainly because it's very customizable. So in case you didn't know, uh, the backdrop node allows you to adjust the tilt and everything like that. So we just have that and a big overhead light coming in to kind of make an infinite floor look. I found that the tilt of 40% is actually like key for a nice infinite floor look versus something even sharper. So like, you know, if you do it like that, you're going to start to see these little folds in the light and stuff. But if you leave it back at 40%, uh, you kind of get this nice smooth fall off. So just keep that in mind. And then we've got a 50 mil camera set up in here as well, just because that's a really nice default one to start with. So let's go ahead and start creating our cauldron. So very quickly, all we need to do is figure out how we want to model the cauldron. Now there's several ways we could go about it, but I think one of the easiest ways is to use the lathe feature. So how do we uh, actually create this? Okay, so we're going to go into our front view. And what we want to do is use the spline tool, spline pin, Okay, and we want to go in here to the snapping and we're going to hit, click this little setting, the little gear icon and go to settings. We're going to turn on snapping and then we're going to turn on, turn off point and we're going to turn on grid. And so grid work plane is going to be perfect. This is going to allow us to snap our points to this grid, which is really, really nice. And we don't want to snap to the line. Uh, we're just going to snap straight to the points so we don't have to worry about anything else. Totally fine. Okay, cool. So now what we're going to do is the way lathe works is basically you draw like a side profile of half the shape and then it's going to wrap it around like that. Okay. So what we need to do is if this is our ground, we're going to draw it a little bit off the ground because we want to put those feet on there. So we'll do a little bit up and we'll just click and hold and that's going to allow us to make it kind of curved versus being static. So we're going to click and make it curve, but we're going to line it up. It's going to snap to this corner because we want this first one to be pretty straight. So we're going to click and hold and snap to that corner and just go out a little bit. And maybe we'll come up like one here and we can curve that down a bit like so. From here, we're going to click and hold and drag just a little bit to make it a little fatter here. And then we're going to make this little lip here. So we're going to click and drag and just kind of make it curl like that and click. And we just want this to be kind of a fun little shape and we're going to come straight across like this because we want it to be flat and then we're going to curl back down and kind of just go inside this doesn't have to be perfect because this isn't really going to be that visible but we can clean it up here afterwards so once you click down through here what we can do is just kind of go in here and clean these up a little bit we'll turn snapping off now 
and just kind of move these around a little bit and clean them up just a bit. And we can come in here and fix the handles in just a second. So now we could come in here to our spline and start messing around with this. Now, sometimes it gets weird and it doesn't let you move the handles right away. And I've found that honestly, just like selecting them and like doing something to them and then undoing it, well, it kind of resets it. And so now we could come in here and adjust our handles to make this a little smoother. I'm sure there's something better you can do that's just like a user error on my part, but that seems to fix it for me. So we're just gonna kind of smooth this out so it's not so wonky. And we'll curve this out just a bit more so it's a little fatter. I think this turned out nice. I'm quite happy with that. And so now what we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and with this selected, we're gonna click and hold this and go down here and hold Alt and let go on lathe. And you can see, whoosh, that creates a cauldron. So if you look at that in our front view, we have this nice little cauldron and it might be a little too wide. We'll go ahead and throw a just standard material on that real quick to look at it in the render view, just so we can see <laughs> how to make it. Uh, yeah, it's a little too fat and the lips a little too big. So the cool thing is, is we can come in here and just fix that. So we'll go back into our side view. So what we can do is with our spline selected, go over here to our brush selection and we can middle mouse click and hold and you can adjust the size of this. And we can just select all of these points here on the edge and just kind of bring it in a little bit more and that's gonna make it less fat, right? And then we're gonna bring this in and maybe we just pinch in the top a little bit. No. I think maybe all we need to do is hit E on this big point here and just make it a little fatter. And if you just want to adjust one side, you hold shift and you can just really increase the roundness of that side. And I think that is going to give us a really nice result. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, I like that. Maybe our lip is too big. So let's go in and tweak that, tweak, tweak that a little bit. Uh, so we'll grab these handles and just hit T and just scrunch them down. Oh, we need to make sure we get that inside line as well. T. Squish them down, and that's just going to thin out that top handle for us. There we go. So we have a nice lip, cauldron, with an open hole at the top. It's looking good. I like that. Very cool. Lathe. Fun times. Okay, so now what we can do is add the little handles, and then add the feet, and then add the little face. And then we'll make candy corn, and then we'll add that in. Okay, so we've got our lathe object going here. So let's go ahead and add handles. Now we're going to uh, make this as simple as possible because why not? So we're going to go ahead and add a torus and we're going to take this torus and we're going to make it uh, have a smaller ring radius, maybe like uh, 80. And then the pipe segments, we want it to be thin pipe, like 10. I think that looks pretty good. I always like to up the segments because we're not going to have that much geometry that's going to be slow anyway. So we're just going to go ahead and grab this torus. We can align it to be X plus. It's fine. And come over here to the side. And, you know, that's pretty good. And if you want to, rather than using a torus, we could use, um, well, no, that's fine. So now what we want to do is inside of this torus, we're going to choose a slice. And that's going to slice it open. And all I want to do is I want to increase this slice to be about 300%. So we're only losing 60 degrees here. And we could, like, adjust it correctly, but I think it's just as easy to grab this and then rotate it. So we're going to hit R and just rotate it up. You can hold Shift. And rotate it up 150 degrees. There we go. Nice little handle. Then we hit R again. And W is going to rotate between the object rotation and the world space rotation. We want the world space rotation. And we're just going to grab it on the Z axis here. And just tilt that in a little bit. And then we can hit W again to make sure we're pushing things out on the move tool. And do it like that. So it's just going to flop out just a little bit there. And then for the... Um, handle bit all we're going to do is use a cylinder and we're going to go ahead and make this uh filleted boom and we're going to go ahead and make it smaller so but it needs to be thicker than the pipe so we'll go ahead and say like 12 here and then the height we'll say like 50 and we'll use our placement tool really quick just to slide it up here and what we want to do is we want to orient that on the z there we go so orient that on the Z, and then we can use our place tool, which is, of course, over here. And we can just plop that down right there. And we need to adjust the height of this to be a little bigger. And we'll try again, just like that. Yeah. And so now we can just rotate it and kind of tweak it and fix it just a bit. So it's a little more flush with that. And we want it to be more in the middle here. And we do want it to be a little longer because we want it to overlap. And then a little 
fatter. So we'll up our ring radius just a bit, maybe maybe 15, and pull it down. Okay, and then we need to rotate up so it's like a little in between the two. And we might just need to kind of lower the amount that we... Ah, uh, this is probably fine. So we could lower the amount we sliced. Might help a little bit, so we'll go a little less than 300. We'll do like 283 and rotate that. And that should line up a little better. There we go. Now we can make this just a little taller. That looks a little more natural, I think. And then offset that. We can do it a little more perfect if we want, but I think that looks pretty good. Rotate again. And we're just getting it just right. Like so. There we go. That looks pretty good. I think we need a few more segments here on our cap and probably our height. We could use 10 and our rotation. Use 64 for sure, so it's nice and smooth. And what we could do is take a look at that really quick. Okay. Looking good. Yeah, nice little handle. Cool, so now with these two things together, let's go ahead and just group them in a null. And we will say, uh, call this handle. And then we'll just grab that and throw that into a symmetry object, which we're going to click and hold on the subsurface division, hold alt and let go on symmetry. And that should put that right on the other side for us exactly where we want it. Because we use lathe, we know it's going to be symmetrical and we built it right on the middle axis. That's very important. I didn't mention that, uh, but if you noticed, I built right on from the middle zero point. That's very important because it's going to split it based on that middle point there. But now we have this nice symmetry of that going on. Looks good. We've got our lid looking good. Everything's looking pretty solid. I like it. So now let's just create our feet really quickly. And we're just going to use a cube for that. But we're going to add some segments in here. We'll do 50, 50, 50. And well, I'm hitting the wrong buttons. 50. And we'll go to filet. <laughs> Ray filet. Uh, I just watched Ninja Turtles. It's fantastic. Uh, fill it. And what we want to do is just maybe lower this down to a size of 150. And then let's just do 20 and 20. Now that's way too small. Let's do 80 and 80. What, what am I hitting that's making me do that? 80. There we go. So we could turn off. It's wanting to do the symmetry thing for us. I don't know why. Um, we're not we're not symmetrying right now. Uh, but basically we have our cube here. And what we want to do is with this cube, we want to add a bin no a bulge we're gonna add a bulge we're gonna hold shift and let go on bulge and we're gonna say fit to parent click and we're gonna increase the bulge of this but now that we've increased this what i want to do is actually grab this bulge and <laughs> slide it over like so and we could do a cool little cauldron leg like that that's not bad um you also can just come in here and adjust you know the length and size of the bulge differently and if we want to, we can maybe go the opposite way and pull it in, which is what I did originally. And I made this taller. So it's taller than the actual object. So we get this like a nice, and we could pull it over pretty far. And we get this nice sloping surface that keeps our flat ground. So I think that looks pretty nice. I did like the cauldron uh, bending out. So we can see what that looks like if we bulge it out again. That might be uh, another way that you could go about doing it. I think that would look cool if you did something like like that might be nice. So play around with that and make it your own for sure. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do this thinner one. I think that looks nice. And we'll make it just a little bit less intense. Like so. Perfect. All right. We like that. We're going to go ahead and put that in a cloner. Hold Alt. Grab a cloner. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this to radial. And then we're just going to increase the radius of this out. Lower the count down to three. And what we can do is move this around to the middle here. And that way it's right around our object and we can pull it up and then of course go into the transform and rotate these on the H about 90 degrees. So they're all going to be facing out the same direction and we can just pull that radius in until we're happy with kind of how that looks like that. Yeah, there we go. Nice little cauldron. Easy peasy. And so now what we can do is take all of these things and just create a new null and throw all of those in that null and call this cauldron. There we go. And now we can just use our placement tool and place that call. 
place that cauldron on the ground, but make sure we choose the Y axis there. There we go. So now we are set. We have a cool little cauldron. Let's turn our backdrop back on. It's big. That's fine. We can shrink it down if we want. T, shrink it down. No problem. And placement tool. Plop. And we can go ahead and make our backdrop just bigger, just so it's a little less in the way. And so let's go ahead and just make our material real quick for this. We can take a look at this. And we'll just turn on the render view. And what we want to do is just grab our blank starter material, which when we double click this, I have a hotkey set up for a new standard material with all of my favorite things. Learn how to do this in the Mind and Motion Workshop. Uh, but here we go. We've got a standard material. And what I want to do is I want to apply this standard material to our cauldron. There we go. Uh, we could go into each piece individually, but right now I'm just going to leave it on everything. And what I'm going to do is, firstly, I just want to make it look like a black metal. So we're going to come in here and we're going to say like 3% for the black. And looks like it's not going on our one shape because we have a material on that. So we want to make sure that we delete that tag. So we just have the cauldron. There we go. And then we want to go ahead and make it look kind of metal. So we're going to say like 0.6 because we don't, it's going to be like perfectly metal or metallic. We're going to do 0.6. And then for the IOR, we're going to go like 1.3 because it's not going to be, you know, like it's more like iron uh, and it's going to be kind of rough. And we're going to use some different things to make it look even more rough. But we've got a little black cauldron. So here's the secret sauce. I'm going to come in here to the asset browser and type in imperfections. And we're going to grab something that looks pretty nice, like, um, not fingerprints. I want smooches. Uh, let's grab speckles. Mm. Let's do this guy, smudgy. Maybe this guy. Yeah, it might be too intense, but we'll grab him at first. And we'll plug him straight into the roughness. So we went with the deposit 815 that one uh so we'll take a look at what that looks like and it's a little so it's okay it's not the best it's not bad but what i want to do now is actually drag that and plug that into a ramp so that i can control the um whites and blacks a little bit differently and uh like them so we'll go ahead and go to alt input for that plug that in instead now we can solo this so we can see how it's going to be applied and you can see how it's being applied on our model and I like that. Um, it could be smaller or bigger. But basically, I think what I want to do is just kind of make it less intense. So I want to go ahead and just slide this white down. Because I want everything to be a little more rough. And maybe make this black more like 25% um, gray. So nothing really is going to be super reflective. Uh, but also don't want it to be super matte either. So I'm going to take this and nerf it down to about 80%. So it's not going to be totally matte either. So now when we unsolo this, we can see how it's going on our object. And that gives us a nice little iron cauldron vibe. And I'm not crazy about how these are, like, are just jutting in. So we're going to make it look like they're welded in. And this is going to affect all of this and make all of it look better. And it's very easy to do. But first, uh, we're going to actually, yeah, let's just do it. So we'll call round corners. Grab that. And by default, you plug round corners straight into the bump map. You don't actually plug it into a bump map node. There you go. And what this does is it creates, if you solo this, it creates this idea of this fake welding. Uh, so we can come in here and adjust the radius of that to maybe be like three. That's way too much. Maybe be like two, one, 1.5. Yeah. And then we can adjust the number of samples to be like 32. That's just going to make it a little cleaner. But now if we look at this, it will look, once this kind of clears up, it looks a lot more like these are welded in versus being, um, see how those look like welded? And we can zoom in with the camera rather than with the uh, digital zoom here. Rather than looking like it's just clipped in, it actually looks welded. So it doesn't look like it's clipping in. It's welding those together to create that nice look for us. And again, here on the handles, you'll see it as well. Maybe I'll just grab this handle here. And I need to go into the symmetry node, grab the actual cylinder, and just slide it in a bit more like that. And maybe down and in, back up. And then we'll rotate this torus just a bit more to kind of fix it 
and pull it in. I think that's going to look a little better. Yeah, so see how those look welded? That's such a cool trick to not have to mess with the geometry and just use that render uh, round corners node to actually create that look. I think that's just like such an easy fix. Cool. All right, so now let's zoom out and look at our object as a whole. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Quite happy with that. Nice little top. Everything's looking good. The roughness is looking good. Let's go ahead and add some just like extra detail to it to really make it pop. All right, so uh, what we want to do now is go back to our secret sauce and this might be too much. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, we might tweak the, the roughness there. We're going to grab some scratches and we're going to go with like hair. Hair scratches, bring those in. And what I want to do is isolate this so you can see what this is going to look like. And oof, would I rather have that be the roughness? No, I want scratches. So let's not do hair. Let's use actual scratches. We'll do like this one. SV1 scratch 7. And we'll isolate that. And we'll just take a look at what that looks like in our render view here. Did I minimize it? I hate that it doesn't pop it back out when you tell it to. There we go. Okay, so that's way too big. Those are two biggest scratches. So we're going to do is scale this up to like 4 and 4. And that's going to make all that smaller. Perfect. And again, we want to grab a ramp. So C ramp. And this is, again, just to control that uh, the, the values there. And see how it's being applied on our feet differently than our, our top? And we'll fix that here in a second. We're really focusing on this big part because then we're going to go in and fix our feet. So I'm going to grab this, throw this into the ramp, alt input, and take that, plug that into the bump. And take this and oh, just replace our round corners here for a second. And we're going to uh, go into this ramp, isolate that. And we really want to nerf this down again, so we're going to make it just less whites so we're gonna make it more black so there's less scratches and bring this in like so and bring this down a bit there we go so we have some scratches and speckles but not a ton right and then we need to go into our bump because right now by default those are going to be poking out because bump is going to say anything that's white is going to be lifted off the surface so we need to say anything that's white needs to be subtracted from the surface so we're going to say negative one in the height scale there we go so now we have these tiny little scratches and imperfections on top of our roughness value, which might be a little too rough. I think it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this ramp of this roughness value and a max on noise. And what we're going to do is isolate this max on noise. Just take a look at it real quick. And for whatever reason, in 2024, you have to take your max on noises and, and multiply them by 100 to uh, get them to look correct like they used to in the old way. Uh, so... I don't know if that's a bug or intentional, uh, but we're going to say like 200 for the overall scale and go ahead and say like FBM for the noise. There we go. And what I want to do is I'm going to grab this and plug this into a color layer, which I've added here. If you type in C and then color layer, of course, right there, click and drag that in. And what this is going to do is it's going to work like a Photoshop uh, blending layer. So we're going to be able to blend these two things together with this color layer. So we're going to grab this ramp and plug this in color layer here. We've got our max on noise plugged into the top and this ramp we're going to plug into the color layer one color. And we're going to isolate this so you can see kind of how this is working. By default, you see we just have the uh, this texture file here. Well, if we start to pull this down, you'll see we start to get that max mask come in. So we can actually just mix these two things together and go like, you know, 50% or whatever. Or we can go to 100% and then change this to average. And that's going to kind of add these two things together. And what I want to do is with this first layer, of, I don't want it to be pure white. I want it to be a kind of gray. And just like that, maybe 59, 50, 60%. And we're just going to kind of blend those together so it's not so unique New York. So it's not so like um, perfect as just the texture map. There's going to be a little organicness kind of mixed in by having that noise in there. So, you know, this is what it looks like, you know, with this noise plugged in, right? We've got that, or we can go ahead and take a snatch out of this, let this filter out a little bit so we can see it a little cleaner. The denoiser is gonna blur it out a little bit for us, but we'll fix that. Uh, we'll go ahead and snapshot that with this button here. And then again, go back to this one, just so we can see the difference. 
And we just have a lot more damage to it this way with this one. So with this is with the noise built in to kind of break it up, and this is without the noise. And a lot of it's the denoisers screwing it up, but uh, we'll, we'll, I think this is going to look better in the end. And we might just need to change it from average to something a little more like subtract or something like that. And maybe that will give us the result we want. Let's see. I don't think so. No, that's going to be too shiny. Subtract, multiply. Multiply might give us what we want. Maybe we should do multiply instead of add. Too shiny. Too shiny. Lighten. Light might be where it's at. I honestly think uh, we just do, we just go back to average and maybe we turn it down just a little bit. Yeah, and then we take our noise and we crank it up even higher, like 350. Yeah, like that. I think that'll look good. We're just going through the process a little bit. This is, this is a little inside. Oh, yeah, that's good. I like that. I think that's going to look good when we actually do it right. And then we'll fix the legs here now that we've got kind of our material set up how we like it. I like this kind of cauldron-y look. I think a couple things we need to do. One, our cloner for our legs. I feel it's a little big. I think we should squish that in. <laughs> Not that little. That's kind of funny, though. I uh, like that. Maybe a little more. Like that? Yeah. Okay, cool. And then uh, the second thing we want to do is with this cloner here, what we're going to do is we're going to grab that material and throw it on this cube here just so it's on its own rather than through the whole object. And we're going to see just how differently that applies that way. Zoom in on this. And we see it's like tiling a bunch and we don't want that. So what we want to do is change this from UV mapping to cubic. And that's just going to fix that up for us. And now what we can do is grab this and grab our texture tool here, which if you zoom out, you see this is how big that cubic texture map is being applied, but we don't need it to be that big. So we're going to hit T and scale that down just so it's a little smaller, closer to the size of our feet. So now when we zoom in our feet, we should have this nice kind of normal looking texture map. Perfect. That's what we want. This is looking good. We fixed that tiling. No problem. And we got to use a new tool we haven't used much in my tutorials, which is just that texture map tool. Nice. So now let's put a cute little face on him and then we'll fill him up with candy corn and we'll call it a happy Halloween. So we'll save this. Cauldron tut. And I spell cauldron? I think so. All right. So cool. We've got this. If we really want to, we can see that there's a little bit of, uh, well, you know, we'll take a look at that later. I don't think we'll need to worry about that. Cool. Okay. Nice. I like this. So let's go ahead and create his little face. So we're going to create a sphere and we're going to make it smaller. We'll say a radius of maybe like 50 and 64 settings. There we go. And what I want to do is just go ahead and hit C and make it editable. And what I'm going to do is just hit T, squish it in on the X here and then squish it in on the Z as well. So now we have kind of kind of a, a less round object, kind of like that, right? A little eggish kind of shape. I'm going to grab the placement tool and plop that <laughs> down on our object, but we're going to make sure we're set to Z and plop that down here. And we're going to go into our sphere here. It's just easier. You don't have to use the placement tool because sometimes you have to come in and reorient some things, but we're just going to zero out the rotation. And we hit T and scale it down uniformly. I'm just going to push this eyeball back into the shape here, like so. And we're going to hit T and scale it up a little fatter. I think it needs to be a little rounder. And then we're going to hit R and rotate it so it kind of goes with the edge of the shape a little bit more. And we could push it back. There we go. And rotate it again so it's a little more like it's going with the shape. Cool. I don't love that it's like clipping through right there. There we go. I think that looks better. We'll hit E. We're going to hit W to rotate between our world space tool and our object tool. So we're going to go ahead and go world space and pull it out and then rotate it a bit more. There we go. Now we can hit world space, hold control and drag it over here to this side, rotate and rotate that this way. And I think we just need to pull this one in and rotate it a little less. 
a little more. I think it's cool to have um, one eye a little bit bigger than the other. I think that always looks fun. Oops. So we've just scaled that down a bit. Here we go. We'll create a new material, throw that on there, and we'll control, copy, and drag. And we're just going to make this one a white reflective material. So we're going to choose white and metalness. We're going to say like 0.2 and roughness. We're going to take down low and change this to like 1.8. There we go. Nice shiny material. And we'll take a look at that real quick. Yeah, maybe not so shiny. Maybe we should do the white, not shiny. So lose the metalness and up the roughness, lower the IOR. Yeah. Like that. That's better. And then now we grab this sphere and we're going to hold control and pull it out. And we're going to make this one the iris. So we're going to make a new material, throw it on that one. And this one is going to be black. We're going to say like 1% black. And the reason we don't do pure black is because sometimes it gets kind of weird with pure black. So we're going to go like 1% and we're going to lower the roughness value of that down and up the IOR of that. And we're going to hit T, make it smaller like so but we're going to stretch it out in the y so it kind of fills our eyeball up a little more and we're going to hit w so we can fatten it up this way and then we can hit e and just kind of slide it over like that and that's going to give us a nice like ooh -woo, cute eyeball here and we're just going to drag that over actually i don't want to do that i'm going to grab this one control click and drag it out to put that black material on that one and hit t scale it in and scale it up a bit and move it over. So it's kind of looking in a little bit like that. I think that's going to look nice and cute. And uh, we've got to fix our reflections here, which we will do. But we're going to go ahead and look at this. And we should be able to see it's going to look pretty nice. Yeah. He's cute. I like it. Okay, so now let's give him a little eyebrows and a smiley face and then fill him up with candy corn. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do eyebrows, we're just going to use a capsule right there and we're going to say object size we're going to say radius of 10 height of 80 we'll do like 12 12 and 64 for the segments and we'll bring it up and just kind of rotate it over hold shift do 90 degrees and then we're going to add a bend modifier in this so with the capsule selected hold shift let go on the bend there we go i didn't hold shift i let go of shift too soon we can drop it in there and then say fit to parent and we're just going to bend that like so. There we go. And now we can grab this and just rotate it around to however we want it to be. Hit E to rotate it and pull it to the front. There we go. And I think this is just a little big. So we'll scale that down and bring it in like that. And copy with control. Rotate this one up and maybe make it more like kind of up high like that. And we'll throw our cauldron material on those and take a look at what that looks like just to see because I think this one might be a little too symmetrical. So we'll rotate it back this way, just like that. So it's like, huh? Right? Okay, cool. <laughs> I like that. Very nice. Is that too far in front? Yeah, let's bring both of those back towards... There we go. Like so. Nice. Uh, now for a smile, we can just grab an eyebrow and bring it down. Oh man, now he's sad. And we're going to lower the radius down to like one, so it's smaller, and we can lower that height down a little bit. But now he's just a very... He doesn't quite understand why he's being used for Halloween. Look at him. And we grab that eye material and throw that on that one, so the mouth is white. And he's grumpy. So let's go ahead and flip him around so he can become happy. R and oh baby kind of offset i think it's important to, to like not put this right in the middle i think that looks fine but i think it's kind of fun to offset it a little bit and you know do a little like that i think that looks fun so i'm quite happy with that let's push that back and the mouth can be a little closer and we can rotate that like so there we go yeah so now we have this fun little cauldron um i think i want it to be just a little bit chonkier right so let's go ahead back and the greatest part about all this is all non-destructive so go back into our original lathe spline go into the side view here and what i want to do is just grab these middle oops i want to make sure i'm selected on my spline spline and isolate that with this view here and go to point mode 
with our spline selected and grab these and just pull them down a bit like that. Maybe I make it a little rounder and we'll go ahead and grab this, pull this out a bit like that. There, now he's a little, little rounder. Okay, un-isolate that. Go back and there we go. Now, <laughs> I like that. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I think my handles just need to come out just a bit more because we moved them. So we'll just poke, poke them back out just a bit like so. But now he's even cuter because he's a little pudgier. Perfect. Now let's make candy corn really quick and fill it up. So this is a big, you know, this is a full project. Uh, another thing I think I want to do is I want to bring his eyeballs. Now that, it's, now that it's, he's a little chunkier, we got to bring his eyeballs back down. Make sure we're in selection mode here. Pull that down and just like that. Just that's that's probably all we needed to do. Maybe make them a little bit bigger and pull them back in so they're not overriding these. Take these and rotate them slightly uh, up. What are they doing? Per object transform. And they're rotating crazy. Gimbling rotation. There we go. And just do it a little bit. Okay, those are being weird. Okay. So let's just fix our eyeballs here. We'll hit W to rotate in world space just a bit. And we'll just rotate them so they fit in there just a little bit cleaner. Like that. Yeah. I think that one might need to rotate this way a little. Yeah, I think it's just become too big. So we'll fix this eye real quick. Rotate it like so. Pull it out a bit. Nope. There we go. Push it in. I don't like how it looks like it's rotated the wrong way. There we go. Okay, now we're talking. Neat. So let's grab our okay. let's grab our handles now, and because they're a little portlier now, so we're going to slide those back out, and then we're going to grab his eyeballs and push those forward because we kind of pushed his whole body out a bit. So we're going to push those forward a little bit more. There we go. A little bigger now, but I think that's going to be okay. And then we'll grab his mouth, push that forward until that comes back out. Yeah. Let's see what this looks like. I think it's going to look totally fine. Render this. Yeah. Nice. Cool. So now let's make our candy corn. Save it. Make our candy corn and throw it in. So to make candy corn, all we need to do is create... Oh, so many ways to do this. Let's do a capsule. And we'll isolate this. So we can see that with this little eyeball here. And what we're going to do is... Just bring the height of this down to like 12, the second radius to like 2. And it's going to be small, maybe not that big, maybe not, maybe not that small actually. Let's do 20 and 5. There we go. And with 20 and 5, we'll go ahead and say like 32 here, 12 and 12, just so it's nice and smooth. You can see our geometry here. It looks pretty good. What I want to do is grab a taper, hold shift, put that taper on there. And just start tapering that in. But I want to go the other way. So we're going to say Y negative, fit to parent. And now we're going to taper in this way. So we've got a good base shape of our camp corn here. And if we bring this, I think that's totally fine. And then what we can do is grab and taper and control copy it again. And switch this one so it's back on the Y plus. And move it up to the top. And maybe flatten it. And yeah. And I want to kind of stretch it out. Yeah, let's do that one again. So we're getting kind of the basic shape here. Uh, what I want to do is with this capsule selected, I want to add another taper. So hold shift, add that taper. And we want Y plus this time. Fit to parent. And we're going to stretch it out this way. And you can see kind of how that's working. We can lift that up a little bit. But there we go. We've kind of got that stretched out. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and select all these. Right click and say connect objects and delete. And now with this as one editable object, we're going to hit T and scale it in this way, like so. Perfect. 
And then lastly, we just want to go into the sculpt tool here. And we're going to go into the sculpt setting up here. We have the sculpt layout. And we're going to go to smooth. And we're going to go down here to the bottom of this. And we're just going to kind of click and drag a little bit around here. Just kind of smooth that out. And I want to hold middle mouse click to make it bigger. And lower that strength down to like 50. And I just want to kind of smooth out the bottom a little bit because it was a little too, too intense. Make the size smaller. There we go. Really smooth out this bottom like that. And we're just clicking and dragging around so it's a little smoother. See how that's working? And then the next thing we want to do is the same thing with the top. And we're going to kind of flatten the top. So we use this flatten tool and we'll make it a little bigger and we're just going to kind of flatten it up like that. Oops. And then we're going to have the smooth tool and smooth that out. So we don't want it to be perfect because no candy corn's perfect. So we're just kind of rounding it out, trying to grab these little rough edges, smoothing it out a little bit on top and make it a little bigger and smooth out the whole top just a bit more. And then maybe do some of the sides. There we go. And we're going to grab the knife tool finally and lastly. And we're just going to kind of cut in here like this and this kind of shape because they always have that kind of indent built in where it's like they've been made in the machine. Cut those back. Nice. And then lower the strength of our smooth again and just kind of reapply a little smooth there to kind of smooth out those harsh cuts. And so now we should have a nice um, organic looking, real looking candy corn. Uh, so we'll go back into the startup. We'll throw a new material on this candy corn just so we can see kind of how it's looking. I think it's looking decent. I think we could smooth out some of this stuff still. Because it's a little wonky. It looks more like a tooth than candy corn right now. I think those knife tool divots are going to be key. So we'll go back to sculpt. And we want that knife tool again. And we're just really going to really gonna indent that in there a little more. Yeah, like so. Mm-hmm. Basically, just redo what we undid. And now, this time, instead of uh, smoothing it, let's just add a subsurface on it and see how that looks. So now, if we come in here and look at this, we should have a little more organic looking of a candy corn. Nice. That looks good. Okay, so now, the secret to this is just simply creating the candy corn texture, which is incredibly easy by using a ramp. Plug that into the color, and you can see already how this is going to be applied. So, well, the bottom color is going to be white. Then the middle is going to be that orangish red, like that. And the top is going to be yellow. Like so. There we go, candy corn. So now what we need to do is grab this, hold control, and pinch that in and bring this up like that. And again, over here, slide that up. Because I don't want it to be like a step, really. I want it to have that little bit of, of range. Uh, and I want more white, so I'm just going to slide this over to get more white. There we go. And now it looks like a nice candy corn. So let's just go ahead and add some subdivision surface onto this by grabbing the same ramp, plugging that into the subsurface color, and then coming down here to the subsurface and increasing the weight of that up to one. Now we have this nice kind of candy corn look very quickly and easily. And maybe we just lower that in this repeat a little bit so it's more just on the edges. But that's looking good. So on top of that, we go back up to the roughness. And we lower that roughness down to like 1.1-ish, 1 1.2. And maybe make it a little more matte, so like 0.3. And I think that looks like a pretty good candy corn. Because then we're going to come in here with a coat and bring that coat back up a little bit on top of that. And maybe add like 0.1 on the roughness of that. Because they do have a little bit of shine to them. But I don't want them to look completely shiny. So there we go. We've got a little bit of shine as well as a little bit of matte finish and some SSS going on. Very nice, cool candy corn. Looks good. I like it. We're going to go ahead and right click, connect to objects and delete. And what we can do now, if you look at this, it's probably too much geometry. So we want to simplify it down a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and grab the remesh tool, hold alt and put this in a remesh. And then for this remesh, we want to change the density of this to like maybe 40%. And basically, that's going to recalculate that and retopologize it for us. So now we can have it look pretty much the same, but have it work faster with dynamics because we have less geometry to work with. 
but it looks pretty much the same. And because our uh, ramp doesn't isn't based on UV mapping or really, it's gonna work just fine. So now we have that created, right click and connect objects and delete once again. And this is our candy corn, save that. Nice, unsolo that. Let's take a look at how big that really is in our scene. It might be fun, placement tool, yeah, cool. So we've got candy corn, let's go ahead and create a cloner. Throw our candy corn in the cloner. Tell our cloner to be maybe just like 15 by 15 by 15. All right. And we're going to say maybe 8 by 8 by 30. So it should be tall. Nice. And we're going to grab this, put it over here in front of our cauldron, and pull it up in the air because it's going to be dynamic and it's going to pour down. I think that's way too many. We'll go ahead and say like 20 here for now and bring that back down. There we go. Uh, but basically, if we try to fill this up, it's going to take forever. And we're going to go ahead and lower this count down to 5 and 5. So it fits in there. It's going to take forever to fill it up. And we don't really need to do that. So we're just going to fake it. And we're going to put a cylinder right here, right inside of our cauldron. And we're going to lift it up so it is right at the top. See here. Make it small. Not too small. but Because we don't want our objects to clip through it. And then we want to have plenty of geometry on it, so 64 by 64. And we'll make it bigger, so it clips into the edge of our shape. And we can go ahead and just lift that up a little bit. We don't want to like clip through the edge, which I think it might be doing, so we're going to lower it back just a bit. There we go. And all we want to do is make sure that it's covered the top just like so. And we're going to go ahead and add segments on the top, so we have extra geometry for those dynamics. And... Uh, we need to add a little more height here, distance, because we're clipping into each other a little bit. But we're going to go ahead and right-click this cylinder and go to Simulation and say Collider. And we're going to just hold Control and basically click that, drag that onto all of our pieces of our cauldron. Not that we're going to really need it, uh, but just in case you do need it, we'll go ahead and put that on the floor as well. And so now what's going to happen is that these candy corns are going to hit this and it's going to look like it's filling up. We're going to lower this down a little bit so it can fill up a tiny bit uh, rather than like having to wait for it to actually fill up the whole cauldron because you're not going to be able to tell because the whole top is going to be covered with candy corn. Uh, so let's go ahead and add our dynamics to our candy corn. So right click candy corn, go down to simulation, rigid body. Now this is in 2024 only. And yes, these are pretty high poly, but the new 2024 handles this very, very well. And so now we can save before we break our machine, just in case. But I love them. We're going to hit play. And we'll probably need to add more frames. Wow. Amazing. Uh, nothing happens because we actually need to put this on our cloner and not uh, our CC. And we actually can make it go even faster by setting this cloner to multi-instance. Okay. Now we hit play. Watch the candy corn pile down and blah, 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 flip right through our cauldron because I don't think we put our cauldron on there right so we want to make sure that this cauldron uh this lathe has the uh, collider body on it which we did not have Oops. so grab that put that on our lathe and that's why it's clipping through our cauldron there so now it'll actually hit the edge of the cauldron spill out perfect now everything's way 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 too slippery so we're going to come down here to collision up the friction of our candy corn to like two Go to our cylinder here at the top. This is going to be the most important one. Friction, we'll say one. And then we'll go to our, um, what you call it, lathe, which is our cauldron. And friction that 1.5. Now, why go above one? Just because I really want it to not slide around at all. So hit play. And now it's going to pile on there and just kind of perfect. So now we can really see if we have enough candy corn or not, or if we need to add more candy corn. We need more candy corn. So we're going to go ahead and hit save, but this is pretty much it. So basically, uh, now we just come in here and we can change this to like 50 and, you know, go nuts with it and raise it up really high. Like so. And uh, this is going to be way too much candy corn, but let's just go ahead and do it for fun. Blah, 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 blah. Cool. Floor is still too slippery. Backdrop collisions. Friction, five. We don't want to slide it all on the floor. Play. And let it go. 
Nice. So now let's just add some time to our scene here and go ahead and hit play. Let it go. It's crazy how much faster this is. This is really fast. 2024 did a good job with this part. Just kind of waiting for them to settle. We need to add some dampening because it's just going to take forever to settle. So we're going to hit Control D, go into our simulation, and with our dampening, we're going to crank this up to 10%. Uh, that way, it just kind of like um, rests a little sooner. Uh, we also could probably do that inside of our dynamic here, um, but we're just going to go ahead and leave it how it is. So hit play, and that's going to just kind of chill things out a little bit so we can get more of a mountain of candy corn rather than... Here we go. Nice slow effect. <laughs> yeah, I think that's too much. I want it to pile on and then chill. So we're going to go ahead and say just 20 for the top. Hit play. And we just want it, we need just one frame, right? So like that. Boom. Perfect. I like that. So we needed, what, 100 frames to get there? Do 100 frames. Click this. All right, that's our tag for our cloner. Go to cache, cache mode, cache scene. This is going to bake that in so we don't have to uh, rerun the simulation at all. And we can actually just pick which frame we like that looks the best of. So we can come in here and just slide this up to about right there, frame 95. Perfect. So now we can just grab a copy of our candy corn, hit control and uh, let go. And what we can do is just use the place tool real quick. Place it there, hold control, place it here. And we're just going to kind of click around, whoopsies, don't make it bigger, uh, and just create instances of it while we're holding control. We're going to click and just kind of place it around on the ground like so. And we're going to grab all of these instances. And we're going to use the dynamic place tool. And we're going to hit the dynamic place tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, pull them up. We're going to make sure we have them all selected. Okay, pull them up. Why don't I have them all selected? Oh, I think some of them are stuck in the ground. Uh, so we want to make sure that we just have them all off the ground real quick. This guy too. And now with the dynamic selection, we're just going to rotate them around a little bit. We're going to just hold shift and that's going to let them fall down. We'll rotate them around on the ground somewhat. We'll just grab a few of them and rotate it around. Hold shift and rotate and let go. It's going to flop down and we'll do the same with this rotate around hold shift and we're just adding some randomness to this uh completely we can lift it up and then rotate shift there we go yeah and we really can just grab these and rotate them around on the ground just so they're not all looking the same like so All right, so now if we go back into our camera, which we are looking through this entire time, go back to our camera, front view, maybe zoom in a little bit here, maybe go a little above it, a little offset, maybe not, maybe like there, yeah. And render that. We should have a cute little cauldron of candy corn. All our candy corn seems to be floating slightly off the ground. Not a problem. All we can I need to do is grab all these instances and our candy corn hit E and just pull them down till they are not floating off the ground anymore. There we go. And I think our subsurface is a little too intense and or our backlight is too intense. So we're going to just light this up and make it our cute little purple scene really quickly and be done with this tutorial. It's coming close to an hour now. Uh, so thanks for sticking along. If you're still in this video and you like this kind of longer form full project content, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, it helps me out a lot. Alrighty, let's make them a little less shiny. Take that coat down a bit, a smidge. Go into the subsurface. And lower that scale just a tiny bit. Okay. So they're not so see-through. Cool. So our top light here, let's just go ahead and um, to turn off our dome light. So we don't have that uh, dome light reflecting in the eyeballs. And what we want is our top light here. We're just going to go ahead and squish that down and make it a sharper backlight make it smaller like 500 by 500 and now we're going to grab that target that is set to and just raise it up because so i really want this one just to be a highlight on the uh candy corn in the back so we're going to go ahead and go to the side view here 
and make it smaller and I bring it back and take that target and put it more like right here maybe even in front and take this light and pull it down yeah like that so we've got this nice backlight on our candy corn or our cauldron I like that so let's add another light so we'll create a new area light and with this area light we'll click and drag our target here did that to create one okay new area light grab that click and drag to say add target and tag it null and we're going to go ahead and grab this area light and what we're going to do is we're going to move our target over here so it's kind of in the middle of our scene and grab this and pull it over here so it's in the front and pull it up make it thinner you can see i can see that in the eye that's really what we want uh, so we want to make this thinner like so yeah and then raise it up a bit because we want it to be kind of like that glint in the eye perfect and we're also lighting our cauldron with that i like that okay cool and then we'll copy that over here we'll control click and drag make this one fatter for sure so it's gonna be the fat boy and we're gonna lower the intensity of that one down way down to like five percent and this one's really just kind of like a, a, a fill and we're gonna lower it down we want it to be a little less in the eye there and we're gonna make this one round because i think it's gonna look better it's a disc and we'll make it tall and skinny Ooh yeah <laughs> i like that nice okay so we'll, we'll come back here so we can get a little more of that in the reflection yeah and we'll take our floor and really pull it back so it's really just on the edge of the candy corn mm, all the way out i don't know maybe we should bring our light in i don't know i don't like that the light's being cut off by the floor there now what i can do is tell this eyeball to not reflect the floor which i think would be probably the easiest <laughs> no i think of what i want to do let's see let's go ahead and go to our project and exclude the floor from this and see if that helps it does put them in front it does okay there you go so i just put uh this eyeball is now this light is not lighting up anything but our cauldron and stuff is not lighting up our floors so i don't like how dark our floors become but we'll fix that with another one but i do like how we've created this cool uh shape on this in fact i like this round bit so much more i might change that one to be round as well so we'll go into this light again and we're going to go to the object and change this to a disc as well oh yeah nice we can make it a little fatter now probably and then taller yes i'm bringing that down <laughs> yes very cuphead now cool i am very pleased with that that looks really good the scratches and stuff might be a little intense on this but it's not terrible so let's go ahead and color our floor uh we'll just use a matte finish here which is just a uh, you know white object with no reflection but we are going to put some reflection on it we're just going to make it rough and we're going to change it to like a nice purple purple maybe not that dark and purple like so cool and then we need to light it up so we have that infinite floor look once again i think a little reflection might be fine okay so what we need to do is create a new area light and this area light once i create it needs to basically create an area light it's freaking out there we go give me this area light there we are okay and i want this area light to just be back here in the back i think this one is created as well and we're just going to make it a little wider and basically that one is just going to be there to light up the background so we're going to turn it up and rotate it like so so now it's creating that nice smooth background for us and we can actually make it thinner if we want to kind of highlight it and make more of an aura around our shape 
So we're going to take that X and slide it in. And maybe we'll get a little bit of a, you know, a rim like that around it. Here we go. I think that looks nice. Cool. Maybe a little, a little more matte. Yeah, candy corn. Uh, let's fix our framing here. If you don't know how to get these grids up, it's inside the camera settings here in the display underneath grid. So you can turn on a grid so you can line things up easier. Uh, so lastly, let's take this, uh, this one that we were doing um, for the eyeball here. Is this the first one, right? No, this is the first one here. This is the eyeball one, right? Top one. Yeah. All right. So let's take our very, very first light and just lower that down to maybe like two. There we go. And go into our eyeball light here and lower that spread down. Like so, really low. I like that. And what we want to do is just lower that power down a bit. And we're going to go ahead and add a gobo here. I think it's going to help. We'll make it a little bigger now that we've sh shrunken it down. And we're really making it just a little isolated there. So that's interesting. But we're going to go ahead and type in gobo. And I use CG Hacks gobo. CG Hacks has some amazing gobos. I go by Zach also has some gobos that are pretty neat as well. I also have some free gobos, uh, but um, CG Hacks is, are, are fantastic. There we go. And so now we kind of have, I don't know, if maybe sticks probably works better than palm leaves for Halloween. Uh, then we can just blur it up just a little bit just to kind of give us a little more dynamics in here. And we'll take that light and maybe lower it down so we get that kind of stretching back a little more. Grab this big light here. Bring it back, really make it over there on the left. Yeah, and then I think what we should do is just grab that and bring it back up behind this light, just to kind of bring that back. Hit T, scale it down, and bring that little dot back, like so. Maybe like there, and then this is too far over. Oops, bring it back over, yeah. Maybe move that pupil over just a bit. Yeah. And then we come in here, add our convert to log space before adding a LUT. And we'll just add like a filmic focus, or sorry, filmic contrast, medium, and power that down because it's always too much. And then we can say color adjust. We can bring that down just a bit and bring this up just a schmidgen. Yeah, I think that one light is still just too strong. So grab that, say like two, four, six. It's just a tiny bit too strong. Yeah. Like that. And then this, I think, is our backlight, right? And we're just going to grab that and kind of move it over. Maybe make it more of at an angle. So we have kind of a rim on that. Not too much. There we go. Yeah. Nice. And then you could add some text in there. It says happy Halloween. Happy. Whoa. Hey, whoa. Imagine being able to type happy. Choose something fun. Roboto. And put that purple material on that, maybe. Bring this up. Shrink it down. T. Again, smaller. Happy. I don't like that, but you get the idea. You could add a, a more fun text in there. Definitely round it so it's a little more fun happy halloween and throw that in there 
probably behind it bigger. But yeah, here you go. Here's our little guy. You can download him on Gumroad. Uh, hopefully you follow along. Thank you. That was a big tutorial, but uh, I kind of like these long form all the way through tutorials. If you like this kind of teaching where I start from scratch and go through the entire process, then you're going to love the Mind and Motion Workshop. Um, so be sure to check that out. All right, y'all. Have a good one. Happy Halloween. See y'all. One thing we forgot to do was add our bump um, rounding corners back in. Uh, so I want to be able to, if I need to come in here and look at this from a different angle or whatever, and I want to, uh, I can and still have that cool round corners uh, working. Do I? No. So I want to make sure that I come back into my material, which is on our uh, lathe here, which is what, this cauldron one? Yes, this one. And what I want to do is I want to make sure I blend this round corners back in. And in order to do that, we're going to add a bump blender. Boop. And just grab this, plug it into layer zero bump input. Grab this one, plug it into bump input one, and add this in. And then all we need to do is set this all the way up to one and make sure we check additive. So we get both of those. So now we're going to get that bevel kind of reaching in. We'll squish this back in just a bit more to make that really happen. Here we go, we'll isolate this so we can see. Here we go, perfect. Nice, so we're gonna get that nice bevel going in. It's exactly what we want. Cool, maybe pull that out a little too much, there we go. And that should really fix our feet as well. Yeah, cool, so now we have both the bump of the scratches and the bump of our, wow, I'm all over the place, and the bump of our uh, textures, so. That's just going to help smooth that stuff out for us. <laughs> cool. All right. And then we need to keep lower our um, candy corn down just a little bit more because uh, we accidentally left them floating in the air. So I'm just going to lower those down and make sure they're not clipping through. A couple of them seem to be doing their own thing. Not a problem. We can just click those. Maybe, maybe not. We'll just grab a couple of these, put them back down where they belong. <laughs> nice. All right, cool. So now we can come in here and get our view. We can always come in here and you know just do the candy corn if we want. We're getting a little going. It's fine. We can do that. And uh, we can just take a look at this and see what this looks like with a really shallow depth of field, maybe like 0 0.2, like ridiculously shadow focus distance on maybe this candy corn right here and we can get a second render out of this it doesn't showcase the pot but it does showcase the candy corn wow that's too small maybe two rather than point two yeah like that i think we just have a little too much gloss on our candy corn so we'll fix that really quick by going into our candy corn material and i think it's in our clear coat we're going to up the clear coat roughness just a bit and bring that down to like 0.08 and come back up here and increase the roughness here like so now it looks like candy corn nice you obviously want to kind of frame out some of those imperfections but you get a nice little nice little render click to focus right there Candy corn. Nice background for your computer there. Cool. All right. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you did. Thank you all so much. Happy Halloween again. Yeah.